There's still a lot of things that I'm sure you'd want to know, but we're not in a position to tell you yet, but it's to focus the attention on the financial aspects of this investigation. We can confirm now that we believe that Carly and Candelice were killed in mid to late December 2008, and the last recorded sighting is now confirmed as being in Charnwood in Canberra. We believe that Carly and Candelice were killed at different times and at different locations, but we can't say any more about that at the moment. A significant development in the investigation has been that uh, people who we believe may be the offenders and others have taken over Carly's identity, her telephone, her bank accounts, her Centrelink and family payments. In relation to the telephone, her mobile phone, I can tell you that it appears that those involved in her murder, and I say those only because we don't know whether there's one or more at this stage, but they have retained her phone and it was used until mid 2011. We believe that the phone was kept by the offenders and used to provide some proof of life and to mislead family, friends, uh, law enforcement um, by suggesting that Carly was still alive because of activity on her phone. We know from time to time that the message bank on Carly's phone was accessed and in response to that offenders sent some uh, replies to those text messages confirming that Carly was alive and well and elsewhere. We know tragically that some of those SMSs were sent to family members to again suggest that Carly was still alive and that on at least a couple of occasions that we know of and there may be more that a female falsely represented herself to be Carly in communication with either family or friends. Certainly some of those communications induced someone in Carly's family to forward some money and that money um, was later withdrawn by the offenders in this matter. We also believe that her telephone was used to help those involved in this terrible crime perpetuate other frauds and obtain money. In relation to Carly's bank account, we can say that her bank account was accessed in at least four different states and we still have a lot of material to go through and further records to obtain. We know for certain that her accounts were accessed in the Northern Territory, South Australia, the Australian Capital Territory and New South Wales and that Centrelink payments, family allowances and other money was taken from her account. A large amount of money went into her account also. We know that that was from wages of a person, uh, fraud and other unknown sources. All up, we believe, over $90,000 was transacted through her account. Significantly, on the 24th of June in 2010, a female in a wheelchair, accompanied by a male person, attended the Australian Central Credit Union on Elizabeth to update banking records and engage in conversations with the bank. Those people were in possession of identity documents and were able to convince the bank that in fact the female that was present was Carly. Her card was also used several times at the Royal Adelaide Hospital in 2010 and was last um, used in March 2012 in Charnwood in Canberra. We have a significant focus on the financial investigation in Charnwood in Canberra and also in South Australia. The bank account was finally closed in 2015 after a lengthy period of inactivity. In relation to the Centrelink and family um, benefits payments, we can say that um, a female, and we're yet to determine whether it's the same female, but I expect we will determine who it was, attended on the 15th of December 2010 at Centrelink at Salisbury and falsely represented that she was in fact Carly and produced identity documents for herself and Candelise. I can tell you the last payments um, through Centrelink were in 2011. 
In respect to what we know about the suspects involved in the financial aspects of uh, the bank account transactions, Centrelink fraud and the use of the phone, I can say that we know that at least one offender was a male, there may have been more, um, and at least two are females, and that those suspects either resided at or associated with or were listed in connection with properties at Daverham Park, Hillbank, Holden Hill and Charnwood in Canberra. With most of the transactions occurring in this state being um, in the northern and northeastern suburbs, except for those that were apparently done en route between Alice Springs and the eastern states. We need to determine whether those people involved in the frauds are involved in the murder. And it's most likely that one or more may be involved in some way. It's clear that some of the people involved in the frauds knew without doubt that Carly and Candelise were dead and continued with their role. The focus of the financial investigation is around determining the role of those people that were involved in those frauds and to see whether they were involved before the deaths, during the deaths or after the deaths. And if they weren't involved in any way with the deaths of Candelise and Carly, they need to pick up the phone and ring Crime Stoppers. We want to remind anybody out there that was involved in any way that anybody who does anything to assist those involved in this terrible crime or who impedes the investigation or withholds investigation deliberately to help the offenders faces a very lengthy term in prison. And I would encourage those people, if not involved in the murders, to not risk their own freedom by withholding information about those responsible for the murder. Notwithstanding someone may have done the wrong thing in respect to some of these transactions, it's not too late for those people to try and make it right and come forward. Because it is certain that if we follow the money and investigate the financial aspect of the case fully, we will identify those people. So I'd ask anybody who has knowledge about these murders of Candelise and Carly uh, to come forward and make contact with us through Crime Stoppers. I'm happy for a couple of questions. How many people have you interviewed yet who could be possible suspects over this case? Uh, lots. I couldn't give you a figure now, but from the start to now, 